Hi, so in the previous video I introduced the idea of business cycles briefly and now in this video we're going to start looking at how we might begin to model them in economics. And to start with we need to understand what is meant by a shock and a propagation mechanism. So to begin with we can start with shocks here. And a shock is basically something that changes that is outside of our model. It's just something, some event that occurs that we just assume just instantaneously occurs and we, have, we haven't modeled it at all. It just represents a change in our economy, which we can then go on to model the impacts of it. So we have some examples here of what we might view as a shock. So we could have shocks to technology. We could have policy shocks, so for example, we say that a government changes its fiscal policy, it suddenly starts spending on something that we weren't expecting, or we have monetary policy shocks where we have the monetary authority, for example, increasing the money supply or changing our interest rates, and so we have some shock to our policy. We could have political shocks, which is slightly different to policy shocks, so we could have, for example, changes in political party that's the incumbent, we could have a referendum on leaving a certain union and ex things like that which could suddenly change the nature of our economy. We could have expectation shocks where everyone in the economy starts expecting for example future productivity to change and so this could be attributed to something we call animal spirits and where people start to expect something different and this could be based on usually based on something true but it could also be something that is not necessarily true but people suddenly start expecting something that won't even necessarily happen and we could also have natural disasters uh, weather shocks for example imagine we have an earthquake where lots of the capital stock is destroyed or we have an outbreak of a virus across the world that is cutting or which is say reducing our population or that is causing everyone to go into lockdown for example those are some examples of just shocks to our system that we like maybe we can explain why why suddenly policy has changed or why people are changing their expectations but we in our real business cycle models these we're not looking to explain them we just say that they happen and then we look at modeling how the the effects of this uh, propagates into our economy so that moves us on to propagation mechanisms so this is, well, let's highlight that for consistency. And so propagation mechanisms are what our model says is going to increase or dampen or extend our shock. So we've had our shock, we've had that something in our, our economy changes. For example, we often look at productivity shock. So our productivity in the economy increases. Okay, that's one thing that's happened and that will have its direct impact on the economy. However, our propagation mechanisms are thinking more about our indirect impacts on the economy. And so we build a whole model which tells us what will happen in our economy once we have some sort of shock to the system. So sticking with this productivity example, we can have consumption and investment decisions changing based on this productivity shock. If productivity increases, that will directly increase our output because everything's more productive. However, our propagation mechanism will look at the consumption and investment decisions that happen indirectly because of this shock. So we have an increase in productivity. This means that if we have an increase in future productivity, perhaps our firms will start to invest more today and in the future they will reap the benefits of, this, of these investment decisions. And so in the future, these investment decisions cause a knock-on effect of increasing our future output and they increase our aggregate demand today by more than just our initial shock did. So this is a sort of propagation mechanism. It's something that the shock has caused a knock-on effect in our economy. We can also have changes in labour decisions. So, for example, our increase in productivity causes an increase in the wage rate, and so people decide to work more, or we could have people deciding to work less because they have a higher wage, and this will be an income effect versus a substitution effect. And so 
again, changes in the labor supply are going to have a knock-on effect on our output in our economy and can lead to this shock propagating and lasting in the economy for a lot longer than the initial shock did. Long after the shock is gone, we can have people changing their labor choices and causing a business cycle. And then we could have further propagation mechanisms, for example, in financial mechanisms. We could have firm decisions, not just individual decisions. And there's plenty of other mechanisms we could have that propagate these shocks through the economy. The possibilities are, poss are even infinite, that we could have lots of different things that are causing these shocks to stay in our economy and to have long-lasting effects. But the ones that I will focus on in this series are based on Keynesian models, which have modelled the effects of shocks, and they've been, been around for quite some time, and also more recent real business cycle models. So let's have a look at what these Keynesian models say. So highlight, highlight another title. And so a Keynesian model and its propagation mechanisms are built on a standard ISLM framework. So if you don't know what that is, it will be very useful to figure out the framework that is used. Um, so we have an aggregate demand curve and then a non-vertical aggregate supply curve. And then we can introduce monetary and fiscal shocks into this framework, which we may decide are from animal spirits. This is something that John Maynard Keynes was a big advocate for, advocate for looking at animal spirits. And so our shocks in this economy come from changes in, say, the monetary authority, increasing the money supply, and we can also look at shocks that are coming from an increase in government spending, so fiscal shocks. We can then add some nominal rigidities into this model. This is something that's done in our new Keynesian models, which we'll look at in, at a later date. And so we have some sort of a cost involved with changing the price, for example, of our goods, and this starts to build into our propagation mechanism, where if we have a monetary shock and people don't want to change their prices, or firms don't want to change their prices, then we have a knock-on effect and this shock starts to have real effects on the economy. And the key thing to notice about a Keynesian model is that we assume aggregate relations, and so these are not micro-founded models. We assume that there's some relationship between variables at the aggregate level and we're not looking at individual optimization. So we make a lot of assumptions and some would say that these models are not built on good economic assumptions and they're not uh, internally consistent. However, that is a topic for a future video because for now we'll be looking at real business cycle models, RBCs. And so these models look at aggregate supply and technology shocks. So we look at a different type of shock on the economy. And so we say that our business cycles are caused purely by aggregate supply and technology shocks. The, these models believe that shocks to technology are what causes our business cycle. And it shows how these can propagate through an economy by building a model around perfect competition and flexible prices. So perhaps unrealistic, but we, we use some uh, simplifying assumptions that our prices are perfectly flexible and we have competition. And then the model builds a general equilibrium and we do micro found this model. So we look at individual op optimization and firm profit maximization using representative individuals and agents. And from this, we can try to simulate the business cycles that we observe in the aggregate data of economies in reality. So this will be what we will be focusing on to begin with, real business cycle models. So check out the playlist for the coming videos on these. And so, yeah, that will just about wrap up this video for now. So check out the playlist, which should be linked about there. Uh, subscribe for lots of future videos and do drop a like rating on this video if it was at all useful.